Okay, so I read the first chapter. I um, actually liked the book. It was it took me forever to read it, but um, I enjoyed even Franco's summary on their projects. I um, thought it was very different. I thought that, wow, these people are crazy. But just because they're crazy does not mean that they have no clue what they're talking about. It's just a different way of thinking than what we normally, what the majority agree on on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I enjoyed their book a lot. But as far as the questions go, on question number one, who was Luther Blissett? I think the question should be, what is Luther Blissett? Because once the World Wide Web was founded, Luther Blissett was a project that many acu activists started and used to develop their own work. Instead of being anonymous, it was Luther Blissett. It was everybody's new identity, which back then in the early 90s was insane when I was reading about this. But it was a name used by many people to publish their work so their identity can be concealed and not criticized. Luther Blissett was a network where artists could gather and converse about the next prank or hoax. It sounds kind of like an older version of a type of social network. A uh, life outside of this life that we know where there are made-up people, fake places, fake work, pretend people. In this case, it was all the same person, Luther Blissett. That uh, the artist would bring their world into our world. It was, like I said, it was early stages of today's social network. Um, after that, I guess it turned out to only be a five-year project. So then, even Franco... Um, came up with a new identity which they made uh, Darko Maver after um, the Luther Blissett project came to an end uh, this artist that they created specialized in making the fake dead look real but their whole point in doing that was they wanted to bring reality to fiction and hope that people would believe their work, the work they had the ability and found the right people to create an individual that didn't exist and presented that person and its work to the media in real life. They wanted their work to not only be believable, but to exist in our reality also. Uh, after reading about the two identities, I <laughs> the question that I have to ask is, what is reality and what is real? How the heck do they manipulate so many into believing what is true and what isn't? I mean, it's a whole nother level of what everything is. Um, as far as even Franco's project, their secret project, the black box, um, to question number four, what did Eva and Franco steal? Well, that depends how the individual sees it. If they consider what they did a stolen work or a recreation of the original. Plagiarism versus avant-garde, it, it honestly depends on how the viewer sees it. I, I would say they are stolen pieces of artifacts, but the work itself is not stolen. The work itself is original. It's totally separate from what the piece derived from that they stole. Um, they did not believe that it was stealing. They saw stealing as practicing art. It gave a validity to their freedoms that they took it quite advantage of. Um, but it was quite interesting reading about that. I was very intrigued on their mentality and how they got bored with this life that we call reality so easily. I think their purpose for making the fake newspapers and fake movie posters 
was because they wanted to test their project they're bringing fiction to reality and see if it could succeed to see if it, anybody else thought the way that they did indeed the newspapers did they did sell 1.2 million copies that I'm sure while people read him believed that they were real at some point um, they were interested in the dynamics of circulation with their project they wanted to see how it affected people how people reacted and with that also came a movement there was um, they created net.art it was a movement in art history that a group of artists developed to show digital work via the internet also known as uh, the internet internet art the beginning of uh, digital artwork um, question number eight uh, life sharing um, if we compare even Franco's piece life sharing to the way we use internet today it's basically our Facebook our social network they put their whole network life out on the World Wide Web for everybody to have access to and to view people do not people do that nowadays but in our own ways their lives were on stage like how we plaster our lives on stage on Facebook I mean people put oh I gotta take a pee or oh I just got pulled over for speeding or something ridiculous people want acceptance from other people in this case for even Franco it was the total opposite they wanted people to understand their work and where they were coming from and basically people they wanted people to see them from the outside looking in <laughs> what's up with their portraits on Second Life avatars um well I'm assuming from my perspective even Franco decided to make the avatars look as realistic as possible to them in the virtual world they are real that is their reality in this reality what we call life they had various identities they were never real they were always somebody fake they were made up names with fake work in Second Life they would s they are who they say they were they were truly themselves in Second Life that they were fortunate enough to find something real um the Nike Crown project I thought that was hilarious I just I'm amazed at how easily people are fooled these days and how easily people are tricked and how easy individuals are manipulated nobody has a mind of their own anymore everybody's looking at acceptance from everybody else and I can't understand why I don't need anybody to tell me how to live my life I'm fully capable of making choices but um, I guess people in today's society rely on others they're very dependent upon others approval but basically I think the whole point was um, that the individual can be manipulated so easily by advertisement a truth, a truth aside of the truth. Our culture today is subjected to the common ground. That a common attribute shared amongst others is enough to convince them into that product. Like when he said, um, when Franco quoted, um, you wear their shoes, why can't their city, ha why can't your city wear their name? I mean, it's, it's a very honest and good question. It's a good point that he's making. Uh, such as Starbucks. Everybody loves Starbucks these days. Oh my god, the whole hype is Starbucks. And honestly, I don't know what the big thing is. I mean, I have a coffee maker at home. I have bought a Keurig. It was like 130 bucks. And uh, you figure a cup. It makes one cup of coffee. Take it on the go every single morning before I go to school. It saves me five bucks in the long run. But um, not everybody shares that same aspect, I guess, of mine. Other people... But, um, I don't believe the university library should be changed to Starbucks library. Um, although Starbucks is influential, I doubt its influence will suffice to the library's purpose, which is to be there for the students, to print, to, uh, 
for research, homework, for whatever, you name it. But um, I would like to see someone try to do the Starbucks, call it the Starbucks project or something, and see the type of reactions they would get from the common student, the average student, to see what they would feel about it. And really, it's an analogy to our daily lives and a choice that we make every day that people don't realize that it compares to. So, yes, I did enjoy reading the first chapter. Can't wait for the next chapters. Um, although it was long, it's kind of tiresome, but it was very different and it was very exciting. And I was amazed. But um, I can't wait for the next one. So that is my feelings on the first chapter of Even Franco Mate's Thanks.